Meanwhile, the Israel-Hamas war is dividing Democrats and threatening President Biden's re-election campaign as progressives slam the president for supporting Israel. President Biden says what's happening in Gaza is not a genocide. But we're not going to forget in November, are we? You are an enabler, President Biden. It is unconscionable uh, what is happening uh, and the fact that it continues to happen with our support. We have to continue to pressure the administration to change course. Well, our next guest says Joe Biden is in big trouble. Democratic strategist and author of the forthcoming book, Politics of Life. Doug Schoen joins us right now live from a hotel room in Boston. Doug, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. So we just heard the congresswoman say, uh, we're not going to forget this in November. It's not like they're going to vote for Donald Trump. No, but they could stay home. They could vote for RFK Jr. And in states like Minnesota and particularly Michigan, that could be enough to cost the president at least two swing states and potentially the presidency. So is the White House listening? Are they trying to do something? I know we've heard behind the scenes, apparently Jill Biden, the first lady, has been going, we've got to wrap this up. Let's get this done with. And what I'm picking up is that the White House is uniquely tone deaf and not listening to not only me, but to Democratic insiders who've been in past campaigns, who've been successful with the Obama administration, the Clinton administration. There's a near total freeze out on outside advice to the detriment of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Yeah. You know, um, Doug, over the last couple of months, we've seen all these swing state polls. Donald Trump is beating him in like five of, five of six uh, across the board. And then you see the headlines from yesterday on Politico, Democrats in full-blown freakout and Biden's weakness becomes bigger and bigger worry for Democrats. It goes on and on. Does this campaign know what they're doing? I don't think it has a clear theory of the case or strategy. They have no message on inflation. They have no message on the southern border. All that they appear to do is demonize Donald Trump and talk about their statistical record of accomplishment. And everything I see in my polls and every other poll, so Steve, says it just isn't working. Yeah. Is there anything they're doing that is working? The one thing they're doing that has potential is to use the issue of choice, abortion, for their benefit. But in an election where inflation is as high as it is and people have trouble at the pump and in the grocery store paying their bills, I think this, unlike prior elections, is going to be uniquely impacted and ultimately decided by the economy. And when, when voters ask themselves, am I better off today than I was four years ago, even though we were in a global pandemic, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had more money in our pocket. And that's what voters say. You're exactly right, Steve. Voters are comparing Trump to Biden. Mm -hmm. And by about 10 points, they're saying we were better off under Trump than with Biden. And even with their doubts on Donald Trump, which are real, they still give him more credit than they do the incumbent president. Can Joe Biden uh, pull it out? He can, but he needs to show more empathy uh, on the economy, on inflation. He needs to do something about the southern border. And he needs to have an agenda going forward that is sensitive to people's needs and interests and concerns, right. not the current message, which really strikes me as tone deaf. I think you're exactly right. Uh, Doug, thank you very much. Good luck at your, uh, at, at your college reunion. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, sir. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.